why does coffee spike my blood sugar? And how can I prevent this without having to actually give up my coffee? This is something I hear all the time and I see it all the time in groups, people who are using continuous glucose monitors and they're tracking their blood sugar. So let's start with the most obvious answer to this because really there's two answers. There's two reasons why your coffee could be raising your blood sugar levels. And let's start off with the most obvious one and then I'll do the less obvious one. So if you are eating, drinking sweetened coffee beverages, um, adding pumps of flavor to your coffee, that's your reason right there. But I'm guessing that because you're tracking your blood sugar, this isn't your first rodeo and you knew that already. So I won't insult your intelligence anymore by telling you not to get all the, all the flavors in your coffee. But even plain milk has sugar in it. Lactose, which is milk sugar, is half glucose and half galactose. And when you drink milk, even if you just have um, coffee with some milk or a latte and it's not sweetened, you do that on an empty stomach, that's going to take your blood sugar up. But that's enough because you're drinking the sugar, which is kind of the hardest way for your body to tolerate sugar, like it would juice or soda. Um, also, the sugar in milk will disproportionately increase your insulin levels. Um, so for better or worse. So having even having an unsweetened latte or um, coffee with um, a couple tablespoons of milk will probably take your blood sugar up first thing in the morning if you haven't eaten anything. And then what about non-dairy milks? Oat milk, which is really popular now, super high in simple sugars. It will really jack up your blood sugar. So oat milk is not a better solution to that. So also, if you're buying coffee from a coffee shop, you know, rather than making it at home um, and you're choosing, say, like maybe you're asking for soy milk or something like that, chances are they are using a sweetened soy milk because it tastes better. Um, so if you're if you're like me and you go to a coffee shop and maybe you order something with soy milk um, with no flavor and you see your blood sugar jack up, ask to see what can I see the soy milk you're using? I'm pretty sure it's the sweetened one. Most of them carry the sweetened ones. So how do you order this? What do you do? How can you have your coffee if you don't like it black? Because you can always have black coffee. Um, I have a few strategies. Some have dairy and some don't have dairy. The first one that most people like the best, if you're already having milk, is to substitute it with heavy cream or whipping cream. Just cream. Not half and half because half and half is half cream, half milk. So that's still going to be too much sugar for those of you who have blood sugar as sensitive as mine. So what you do there is you just pour your cream in your coffee and you might notice that it doesn't dissolve like milk does. So just use, you know, invest in one of these little battery powered things and blend it up and it will be so good. And you can use less cream than you would normally milk. And in a coffee shop, you just stir it up. But so cream, cream is great. The other, another option is to use what Dave Asprey popularized as the bulletproof coffee, where he'll, you put um, unsalted butter and MCT or coconut oil in your coffee. And again, blend it up. Um, that's another great one. That's So it's just fat and coffee. I think the Bulletproof coffee also has collagen in it. So a little bit of that collagen type of protein. Um, you could also put unflavored whey protein in there and make, so that's another thing you can do. And it makes a very rich, very nice coffee. So those are two that do have dairy in them that people like. But then if you want a non-dairy version, you could go for um, a coconut, a unsweetened coconut milk, an almond milk or that combo, coconut almond, or unsweetened soy milk. Those you can use in your coffee and it won't spike your blood sugar. I personally, and that's this is what this has in it. I make a homemade walnut cashew milk with some date and vanilla and cinnamon. So there's not a lot of date. In fact, I, I make up about a week's worth at a time and it makes a really creamy kind of a coffee creamer and the dates give it a tiny bit of sweetness. But when I drink it, even on an empty stomach, it doesn't take my blood sugar up. And so and I'll link to that recipe because I think it's a really good recipe to use. Um, so those are some alternatives to putting milk or flavors and things. And it, especially if you like the sweetened coffee drinks, this version where you add the vanilla and cinnamon and a little dates, a little bit of dates really gives it just enough sweetness that I think you'll like it. But, um, you know, there's a less obvious reason why your coffee is raising your blood sugar and it's your stress response. It's stress hormones. So 
you know, when even we're in the when we're in the fasted state, if we experience an acute stress, um, then we're going to secrete hormones like adrenaline, cortisol. And when you when you secrete adrenaline, which is your fight or flight hormone, it will tell the liver, your liver, to release some stored energy to give you the energy to to do things. So it'll um, it'll release stored glucose into your bloodstream, and that glucose is to fuel your brain and your muscles so that you can fight, flee, whatever you need to do there. So if you have coffee, it's going to stimulate the release of those stress hormones, right? And then you're going to get this release of glucose and free fatty acids, okay? And what's interesting about that is, now if you ate food and then got that glucose rise, eating food will help you produce the insulin that'll bring it down. But if it's your stress hormones elevating your glucose, you won't have the same stimulus to produce as much insulin to bring that down. So you might notice it just stays up a little bit higher, uh, a little bit longer because you don't have so much insulin on board. Um, so the solution to this, if you don't want this to happen, is to switch up your morning routine a little bit, right? Um, so I kind of call it the rule of coffee. And the rule of coffee is to not drink coffee on an empty stomach. And so the order of doing things, I love the order of doing things, the order of eating is when you wake up, instead of reaching for that coffee straight away, first have water. For a lot of people, water and electrolytes or a little sea salt. Water, food, coffee. And when I say food, you know, I don't mean like a bowl of cereal. I mean protein. So let's say water, protein, coffee. That's the order. Because by getting some fuel on board, getting some protein in there to stabilize your blood sugar and fuel the body, that will actually help lower your stress levels. It will lower your cortisol. And then when you bring coffee on board, it doesn't, it doesn't send your body into that big stress mode. Do you know what I mean? And this is especially important for women over 40. When you get into that perimenopause, postmenopause, women, especially women who are used to just bringing it all day long, we notice that we don't adapt to stress as easily. We don't handle that stress as much. We need to take care of our hormones and, and our stress levels. And so we need to pay attention to, you know, that, that stress bucket, that cortisol bucket. And if you, first thing in the morning, if you don't eat and then have coffee, you're just going to be amping up the cortisol levels and the stress levels. And that is not what you need, especially first thing in the morning. So it's going to make a big difference to actually do the water, protein, then coffee to keep your stress, keep your cortisol levels down, especially if you're a woman over 40. And finally, you might be one of those people like, but I'm doing IF, I'm doing intermittent fasting and I don't eat till 11 or 12. Well, fine, if that's working for you, great. Um, but I don't see this working very effectively for women, especially women over 40 for this reason. They don't eat during the most active part of their day when they need calories, they need the fuel. And if they're not getting the energy when they need it, this tells their body, hey, is there some kind of famine going on around there? And then their body kind of switches into maybe high stress, you know, it amps up the cortisol, which is the survival mechanism, and might even help them ratchet down their metabolism a little bit so they don't starve, right? Just what you need, just what you need right now. So I would say if you're a woman over 40 experiencing this, and you've been doing intermittent fasting to try to lose weight because you've gone through menopause and you put on 10 pounds, I would move that fasting window. And I would have that first thing in the morning, the water, the protein, and then your coffee and stop eating, co drinking coffee afternoon, right? So that's all I have for you. <laughs> that's all I have for you. Stop putting sugar in your coffee and maybe eat before you have coffee in the morning. I think that'll help you with the blood sugar issues with your coffee. And, um, if you like this content, please remember to hit subscribe and thanks for listening.